Hello everyone, my name is Teacher Faith, Faith Motegi, and I'm here to take you through today's lesson. And I'm hoping that we're going to have an interactive session and that even though we're not physically together, that we shall still learn the word of um, the word of God that he intended for us to learn about today. And I'm hoping that we're going to have a delightful time. So today's lesson uh, will help us to know how to navigate through life in different ways and we'll see how jesus will help us in that so before that let us just have a, a word of prayer and let's pray so let's pray let's go ahead dear heavenly father unto you we give you glory and honor thanking you so much for this moment in time thank you for giving us good life thank you for giving us a roof of our heads thank you for giving us technology that we're able to use for a moment like this and for today's lesson oh lord let us let it impact on us and help us to understand it even as we move forward we are praying all this trusting and believing in jesus name amen amen good so today's lesson um this will be it's tailor made for we are targeting like uh, age 6 to 12 uh, the little ones will have their lesson. Um, I believe the, the respective teacher will have done that or will do that. So let's get to the lesson. So we have Jesus helps the fishermen. But even though I have said Jesus helps the fishermen, hmm, we need to find out just, just something. Um, right now, I'm sure that even at home, I believe that's where we are right now, um, you have tried to do some baking, isn't it? Or some experiments, whether they are from, uh, it's sent by, from school or uh, it's your own different ideas, isn't it? So I believe there's something called instructions hmm. or in this case, a recipe uh, for when it comes to baking. So let's, let's explore a little bit, isn't it? Why do we need to follow instructions? Hmm. One of my favorite books about favorite cakes. So I love baking. I'm getting better at it even as we move forward with the um, self-isolation and the quarantine and all that. So when it comes to baking a cake, there's something called a recipe, isn't it? Let's look into one. So we have, let's just randomly pick one. So in this case, is a cream-filled sponge cake. Hmm. Looks delicious, doesn't it? So there are instructions, the amount of eggs that you will need to have and all that, whether it will be for the filling and the rest, isn't it? Then there'll be a serving, there's a preparation time and it has some instructions. And then it tells you maybe the best way to serve it, whether hot, cold. In most cases when it comes to our pastries, it's up when it has cooled down. So let's see if maybe you tried to do your own baking without following instructions. Mm. Or you missed out on one. What usually happens? Mm. The cake that gets burned. It's not edible. It's just a gooey mess. And nobody likes that, does it? Do we? No, we don't. So that's about baking. When it comes to the recipes, we need to follow instructions, isn't it? Good. Now let's go to the science stuff. I love books, so I have this around for my nephews and friends, whoever comes along. So we have this. When it comes to science experiment, yes, sometimes you may try out something different just to see how it goes, isn't it? But most of the times so that nobody gets hurt, uh, you don't, you yourself don't get hurt, other people don't get hurt, you don't destroy buildings or, or equipment around you, you will need to follow instructions. So... If we follow recipes, if we follow science experiments, the main one that we need to follow is the word of God. And this is where our instructions come from. This is where our guidelines come from. This is like a recipe for life. So I want us to get to Luke chapter 5 verse 1 to 11. I hope you can get it. Hmm? Luke. So it's in the New Testament right after the book of Mark. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So you can even look for more interesting facts about the book of Luke. So let's read. And I believe we can do that together. So my Bible says, Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 11, the calling of the first disciples. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, 
Mm. With the people crowding around him and listening to the word of God, he saw he saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. Mm. Find out why they washed their nets, yet they were in water. Interesting, isn't it? So he got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. Verse 4. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. <sighs> Simon answered, Master, <laughs> we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. Nada. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. Because you say so. Verse 6, when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that the nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and they filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at, at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken and so were james and john the sons of zebedee simon's partners then jesus said to simon don't be afraid from now on you will catch men so they pulled their boats up to the up 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 on shore left everything and followed him and that is luke chapter 5 verse 1 to 11 so what are we learning from this? So there, Simon Peter. Basically, the story usually tells us more about when Jesus called his first disciples. But for today, I want us to focus on what the memory verse will help us in. And it's all here. Jesus went about doing good. Hmm. And that's from Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Can we try that together? Jesus went about doing good. Let's see whether it works. Good. Jesus went about doing good. And then we come from Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Jesus went about doing good. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. We can try that as we go ahead and to be right here. So, I want us to look into this. We have read about... Jesus asked Simon to use his boat. Simon was tired. Like, I've been fishing the whole night. Find out why fishermen mostly fish at night. So I've been fishing the whole night. And then you're telling me to go back there. To do what? Like, seriously. Don't be surprised, maybe Simon was thinking such thoughts. He's at the point where he just wants to go away. He just wants to to go leave his boat and then come back at night and he's been fishing the whole night and maybe there were storms or whatever it was so he must have been feeling frustrated and it's like who are you to tell me what to do it's my boat uh <laughs> you know the thoughts that we think but don't say mom tells you something and like <laughs> That tells you that like, your sister, your brother tells you something you're like, see, imagine, you, you just want to go away. You don't want to be disturbed or you're feeling discouraged. Like, what are you telling me to do again? Imagine I have tried that, that, that uh, equation. I have, I've tried social studies. I have tried saying those words in Kiswahili and it doesn't make sense. And then you're coming telling me to do it again. Okay. Now, this is the part that you should pay attention. Simon Peter, despite being discouraged, despite being sad or tired and tired, he respected Jesus. And he followed his instruction. And lo and behold, they went out deep into the lake. 
I believe it was a lake. This funny Genesaret. Yes. Lake Genesaret. Try and say that three times. No. As fast as possible. Let's see whether you can master the tongue twister that it is. But where were we? He respected whoever was talking to him. He followed instructions. Take your boat out to sea. He took his boat out to sea. Uh, lower your net. I believe that's what he says. Put out, put out into deep water and net down the net for a catch. He let down the nets. Ah, he. Where where will go? Let's see. I will take it up higher. So we say this. Uh, this is verse verse seven. Ah, ah verse six. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So you have tried that math before. You have tried that recipe before. You have tried that thing before. You have tried speaking in front of people before and you're like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. maybe you shrubbed. Maybe you forgot all your words or whatever it is. You have done it before. And then someone is telling you, try again. So what is the right thing to do? Because another way, another way you look at this verse is you're doing the right thing. So what is the right thing? He went about doing the right thing. Are you doing the right thing? Or um, uh, who are you today? You look at everybody and you're like, don't tell me. You have told me. I'll do it my own time. But remember, if Simon did not follow instructions, if he did not respect the person giving him the instructions, would he have gotten a successful catch of fish? Mm -mm. Would he have become one of the disciples of, of Jesus? Would his name still be in the Bible? Mm. Would have told Jesus, go and get your own boat. This is not your boat. But he followed instructions. He respected the person who was giving him the instructions. And he went out and caught the largest catch of fish. So there's something that you're hoping for. You have tried before, but it hasn't worked. And you're feeling so discouraged. You're like, I'm so small. I'm so young. I'm a girl. I'm a boy. Not me. Yeah. And you're looking at yourself and you're wondering, why, why, why? So today's memory verse says, Jesus went about doing good. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. And I want us to just finish with this. It is good to obey instructions. Remember science experiments? Remember recipes. But most of all, the instructions are in the word of God. And it starts, some chapters might be a little bit confusing, but that's where you ask for help. Where you ask somebody for help. Who did someone ask for help? He asked his friends. He didn't do it by himself. He saw this is a large catch of fish and he was like, I can't do this by myself. I need other people's help. That's why we ask for help from God. And then God has given us family, friends, neighbors, community at large, Sunday school teachers, or whoever it may be for you to ask the questions. Such that you don't say, I don't know. So if I ask someone who, excuse me, that's my body. Mm. So we continue. So it's, don't look down on yourself. There's someone who is out there to help you. And I just made, and I'll challenge you to make a paper boat. I believe you can. Just look for the resources and make a paper boat. Now, you may seem like you're teeny tiny. But the Lord has the mega ship. The mega. mega. So when you ask for help, he puts you on board. Hmm. It's just a fun way of looking at how when you pray you get on board so you ask all these questions and his love jesus says love is big enough his boat quote unquote is big enough to take us through so jesus helps the fishermen luke chapter 5 verse 1 to 11 with our memory verse from acts chapter 10 verse 38 the main things are let us follow instructions. 
Let us be respectful to those who are around us. And more importantly, let us not do life alone. Let us ask for help. And help comes through the word of God, through praying, and more so through the people who are around us, who we can help, and who can help us. So that is today's lesson. I hope you will have learned something interesting. I hope you can try and make the largest boat with the largest piece of paper around you. And then see if you can decorate one ship just fell off. But you can get it back later, isn't it? Good. So this is me signing off with so much love and I can't wait to see you soon. So bye-bye and take care. Bye-bye.